Yo, what's poppin' Animites? Wing is on, everyday wise is here. Welcome to Mangavation, and today I'll be discussing the secret origins of Inko Midoriya and why Deku and Shigaraki are actually cousins. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into my thoughts and headcanon and explaining why I believe Inko Midoriya is Nana Shimura's daughter, which means that Deku and Shigaraki are actually cousins. And obviously in order to validate this claim, we have to look at characters other than Deku and Shigaraki and see their parallels in context to the story. Before I begin, I want to mention that this video stems off of a mega theory that I've been preparing over the last few weeks, and this video will act as a part one of the two part mega theory discussing the secrets in the my hero world and the true identity of deku's father so although i will be recapping this theory in that video it is important to understand this theory as well so i would advise you all to watch until the end also in my last big theory video on why deku did not lose one for all to bakugo it was mentioned in the comments that i was too vague in my explanation so to prevent any of that in this theory, I'm going to be as thorough as possible, so please be ready for a very intricate explanation. So we don't know much about Inko Midoriya besides her name, Quirk, the fact that she has a husband who works overseas, and that she has a son who is the main character of his own series, go figure. But Horikoshi isn't just a mangaka. I think it's clear understanding by now that Horikoshi is very meticulous in creating a character's name, design, quirks, and personalities in parallel to the story, and Inko is no exception. But before we get into Inko, let's explain everything we know about Nana and how she works in this theory. Now we know much more about Nana than we do about Inko. Nana was a pro hero and obviously the seventh user of One for All. She eventually had a son named Kotaro Shimura who grew up to hate her and pro heroes together. In Shigaraki's backstory in chapters 253, his father Kotaro Shimura implied that he hated heroes because Nana abandoned him at a young age to be a pro hero and fight crime. He hated that she gave him up to foster care to protect other strangers that they didn't know. But we find out that's not true. Later in the chapter, in a letter that Nana left behind to Kotaro, she specifically said, quote, Your mom has to go fight a really bad man now. That bad man might try to do mean things to you. And that's why we can't be together anymore. So I think it's safe to say that that bad man was all for one. And interestingly enough, all for one still ended up getting info on Inko's family. And around 28 to 30 years later, all for one actually gets Tinko Shimura, better known as Shigaraki. But regardless, Nana wanted to separate herself from any family to protect them cutting all ties with anyone close to her because she knew All For One would use that to his advantage as we've seen he has with All Might. Now that we know the true reason why Nana abandoned her son, that made me ask the question, why would Nana abandon her child to protect him from All For One while continuing to stay in the same area and fight crime? That just does not make sense to me. And my answer to that was, she didn't. I believe she went to an area that All For One didn't know about in preparations for their final battle. And there she conceived Inko Shimura who is now Inko Midoriya. Now that's the general base for my theory so let me further explain. We know from basic math that Nana dies around 10 or 11 years after abandoning Kotaro. How? Well one because in the letter she left Kotaro she says I hope you live a life full of smiles and joy knowing your mom is over you in heaven, implying she knows All For One would eventually kill her. And two, because we know that Kotaro in his first appearance in the story is 32, and Shigaraki is 5. Shigaraki is now 20, which would make Kotaro 47. Well, comparing the age difference based on Endeavor being a first year and All Might being a third year at UA, Endeavor is 46, which would make All Might 49. Don't judge me, I put a lot of effort into this theory. 
Okay, so we know that All Might was 18 when Nana lost to All For One, and being two years of a difference from Kotaro would be 16. Well, Kotaro and his flashbacks looked both like Deku and Shigaraki when they were about 4 or 5, so I'll also say he's about 4 or 5, which is 11 years before Nana's death. You may think, well, the letter implies that she was going to fight All For One right after giving up Kotaro. But Nana's final battle didn't happen right after the letter because that would mean that All Might would be 17 at that time. Inko is currently 42, meaning she's 7 years younger than All Might and 10 years older than Kotaro. Well, Inko had Deku at 16 years old when she was 26. However, Shigaraki is 4 years older than Deku. So unless Kotaro in his flashback was 11 and doing his thing, it's proven that Nana died around 11 years after abandoning Kotaro. Now, why does all this matter? Because I need to first prove that in that time, Nana had to be training and getting strong enough to eventually lose to All For One, but she couldn't do it in Japan. And I have reason to believe that Nana and Gran Torino as well, her side dude, both went to America or another country, but I'm pretty sure it's America, which is where she conceived Inko Shimura. Now don't kill me just yet. Wait till the end because I'm almost done with Nana and then I'll get to Inko. So I know you may ask, where does America come into this and why do you even think Nana had to leave? Great questions that I hoped you thought about. Mm -hmm. After Nana Shimura's death, All Might was training with Gran Torino. Gran Torino said that All Might was not anywhere close to having the strength nor experience needed to rival All For One. So, in order for All Might to gain these things, Gran Torino was going to join the UA staff as a teacher to train All Might in secrecy, and after All Might graduates, he would immediately go overseas to America and gain the experience and strength needed. The key thing, however, is what Gran Torino said before this. He mentioned that All For One has eyes and ears everywhere, and that All Might wouldn't be able to survive under All For One surveillance. And again, that proposed multiple questions. If All For One has eyes and ears everywhere, why would Gran Torino tell All Might to go overseas to America out of all the places in the world instead of a different place in Japan? Well, obviously, because we know that All For One once ruled over all of Japan. And through that implies Gran Torino knows that America is a place free from All For One surveillance. And how would he know that? Because he, along with Nana, had to have gone to America, made connections, and know it's a safe place. Now tell me that does not make sense. So I just explained how and why Nana abandoned her son to go to America. Now I didn't explain when, why, or how she had another child, because I don't think you need a reason to have another child. They just, you know, sometimes pop up sometimes, you know? And I think that we all know how she, <laughs> we know how, we know how she had a child. <laughs> but when she had Inko, I asked estimated to be a year after leaving Kotaro. However, before I explain how the birth dates correlate, I'm going to explain the similarities and evidence that swayed me into believing that Inko is in fact Nana's daughter and was born in America. I mentioned earlier that Horikoshi really takes his time when creating his characters to create parallels and in this case to hide the potential truth. But with character designs, names, and quirks, we have to look deeper into the meaning and symbolisms to truly understand what Horikoshi is saying. So to start, let's talk about character design. I specifically wanted to start here because this is the point that would typically debunk this theory. When it comes to character designs, there is one major difference in the two and that's their eye style. This is typically what debunks this theory, however there is more evidence that proves Inko is Nana's daughter than not, and I would argue that direct looks doesn't mean you can't be kin to another character. Shoto looks nothing like Endeavor and actually looks more like his mother Rei with his design and hairstyle than Endeavor. However, the easily noticed characteristics is his hairstyle symbolizing his fireside and his eye scar as well. And speaking of hairstyle, it was even brought up by All Might himself that Inko reminds him of Nana in her hairstyle, which shouldn't go overlooked because Horikoshi found it important enough to have All Might mention it right after Nana's introduction into the series. And that also should tell you something because Horikoshi with over 100 named characters in the series who all have different designs, he specifically created two characters with similar designs, which is not a coincidence. Now on to quirks. 
Ingo Midoriya has an unnamed quirk. However, we know that she has a gravitational type quirk that allows her the ability to pull small objects towards her. It's not really a shown quirk or anything significant, but it's important to note because as of chapter 256 of the manga, we find out that Nana Shimura also has a gravitational type quirk called Float. Now we don't know the description of the quirk and I believe that Horikoshi is not allowing us to know right now because it would directly tie Nana and Inko Midoriya. But based off the action we see from her in the backstory of All Might, it can be implied that her quirk allows her to repel any object from her that she touches. Which would be the complete opposite of Inko's quirk. Being that with a single touch, All Might uncontrollably floated away from her before her final battle with All for One. And we also know from All Might himself that Float was not a strong quirk either. And the last thing is names. Again, I think it's a given that we all know that Horikoshi is a mangaka that is very meticulous in how he names each characters. He makes each and every character's name very specific to their specific roles in the series, and it also can tie into the connections with other characters. Inko's name broken down into kanji means pull towards and from gravitation, which obviously is a direct reference to her quirk being able to pull small objects towards her. However, the word Inko in Japanese means parakeet and the Midoriya in her name translates to Green Valley. Now Inko's name meaning parakeet is an important part of this theory because it connects the possibility of where she was born. So make sure to take note and remember this for later. Nana's name represents the number 7 as we all know from being the 7th user of One for All. However, broken down as a kanji, it translates to green veggies. While the she and Shimura translate to ambitious and the Mura to village. So her name, if in a sentence, if I'm correct at all, could be translated to an ambitious village with green veggies. When you compare it to Inko's parakeet in a green valley, Green Valley is also a vegetative land. This is one of the major components that's not mentioned much, but it is important because Midoriya is Inko's married name. And Horikoshi made an effort to specifically connect the idea of green and vegetation in both Deku and Shigaraki's last name, even through marriage. So you have similar designs, similar quirks, and connected names that points into the connection between Inko and Nana Shimura. But let's continue. I mentioned earlier that Horikoshi makes each and every character's names very specific to their roles in the series and it also can tie into the connection of other characters. So with Inko, her role in the series ties perfectly with her name. I told you all to remember the meaning of Inko's name earlier. Well, Inko in Japanese means parakeet and interestingly enough, Inko shares very specific traits of a parakeet that can connect to Inko being from another place or in this theory, America. And I know you may think this is crazy, but Horikoshi does these things on purpose. Now, a parakeet has four main traits, one being that they are typically monogamous creatures, which if you don't know means having only one mate at a time, and another trait that works with that one are that parakeets are very trustworthy and loyal, which in Inko's case is her obviously monogamous long distance relationship with her husband who has been overseas for at least 12 of the 16 years of Deku's life. Parakeets are very affectionate animals in both non-romantic and romantic relationships, i.e. Inko's high affection for her son Deku. And the most interesting traits parakeets have are their excellent communication skills. Parakeets have the ability to mimic sound and learn any human language. So obviously, if Inko was from America, she would speak English and have to learn Japanese or speak Japanese and have to learn English. Regardless, I don't think it's a coincidence that Horikoshi gave Inko a name that involves characteristics and traits she expressed openly that could be miraculously tied to someone who may be a foreigner to Japan in the My Hero series. And that would also cue a potential answer to the overseas work and relationship from Inko Midoriya's husband. So you may be asking, well, how does this Inko headcanon even fit into the story? And I'm here to say, oh, it, it does, it, it, it really, it really does. Now this overview on how I picture each event ties into the idea of parallel lives that Horikoshi has been expressing through Deku and Shigaraki. Nana Shimura, whose name symbolizes the number seven, which represents being the seventh user of one for all, had two children five years apart, both in the seventh month of the year, July. Their birthdays are nine days apart, which I found interesting because Deku is the ninth user of one for all, but that could be nothing. It's just something that I found intriguing. 
The first child grew up hating his mother for abandoning him, even though Nana's reasoning was for all for one to not track down her family and take advantage of them. Nana needed to completely erase the idea of having a family in Japan and start new, moving to America to prepare for an inevitable fight with all for one, where Ingo Shimura was then born. The youngest child grew to love her for actually having a relationship, teaching her both English and Japanese, and maybe even more languages, and Inko admired her hero mother so much that she even took on her trademark hairstyle. Kotaro and Inko both had children that were coincidentally born without quirks being Deku and Shigaraki who are 4 years apart. It's important to note that Kotaro would be 4 when Inko was born, but due to his birthday being 9 days after Inko when he would turn 5, technically they too were four years of a difference it's just way easier to say five though all for one eventually found out about nana's family many years after nana's death and was going to manipulate them by using them as vassals to defeat all might but with Inko being born in America and Kotaro in Japan, Shigaraki was the only grandson All For One knew about and was targeted and given a quirk. By the way, Deku was only 1 years old at the time Shigaraki met All For One at the age of 5. These two descendants of Nana were born quirkless, both loved and wanted to be heroes, then found themselves under mentorship of the symbol of peace, All Might, and the symbol of evil, All For One. And it was all because of events that happened not in just their lives, but in their parents' lives as well. Which would not only be completing this parallel life story that Horikoshi is portraying in Deku and Shigaraki, but it furthers the parallel into Inko and Kotaro's life, all stemming from Nana Shimura. And thus I gave my evidence proving that through Inko Shimura, Deku and Shigaraki are indeed cousins. There is one point that I can't answer in this video and that's why Inko and Deku moved to Japan in the first place. That would just spoil a major part to my part 2 of my mega theory so be on the lookout for that. So I just explained how and why Nana abandoned her son to go to America, the correlations, the correlations and connections for my theory of Inko being Nana's daughter and also being from a foreign land which I say would be America and how that would make sense to the story of Deku and Shigaraki's lives respectively. Many people would think this theory is a stretch, but please look at every question I ask and ask yourself, why would Horikoshi add this to the story and does it even make sense to the story? And if you say just cause, then I guess you may be right, but uh, I enjoy letting my mind connect everything that it wants. This is just a theory that I wholeheartedly believe and I had fun explaining my thoughts on the origin of Inko Midoriya and how Deku and Shigaraki could be or is in fact cousins. But that all about does it for my theory. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did definitely smash that like button and sub for dubs to join the animes on this amazing journey. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this idea. Was I spot on or did I miss any key points? If you would like to discuss